spin it and tick over. Nice. Just one of them. Right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'll breathe it all in. <sighs> Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today oh. it's going to be a slightly different video because we've already done this stretch. So I thought, what can we do to film it? Because it's a lovely film day. I don't want to film it. I haven't filmed in ages. So I thought we'd make a little, um, a little like, uh, sort of back, background video on us, really. Yeah. Like, um, you know, how we came to buy an airboat um, and live on, you know, Olive. an airboat. Yeah. So yeah, today we're going to talk you through how we ended up buying a 70 foot airboat and living on it. So yeah, yeah. join us. Join us. But first, we've got to do a lock. <laughs> Start off with um, how you two met. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, we we met in a me and Andy met in a, in a nightclub in Southampton uh, in 1995, and I used to go there. I didn't have my two boys, Tony and Luke, every like um, Saturday night. So I used to go out with my friend. She used to lodge with me in the house where I live and we used to go yeah out night clubbing and yeah I've been I've been I'd seen Andy or Andy'd seen me about three weeks in a row and yeah it was eyeing me up you know how it is you know when you're being eyed up so he's eyeing me up and everything and then after <laughs> after three weeks uh. after three weeks I said um oh, oh I went over to him I goes oh you're gonna buy me a drink then so it all started there didn't yeah, it? Yeah it cost me a fortune that <laughs> And then, um, yeah, we were sat, discuss, you know, having a conversation, asked how old he was. And uh, bearing in mind, I was 31 at the time. And so I said, oh, how old are you? 30 at the time. No, 31. Oh. How, old are you? how old are you? And he said, 22. I said, oh my God. I said, too young for me. So I thought you were about 27. And it all stems from that, really, doesn't it? Yeah. And the only reason I would have met him is he split up with his girlfriend in Falklands where we used to live for a couple of years and came over, only been over, how long have you been over? A few months, that was all. Yeah. And Josh was born out of it. Oh, oh he wouldn't be interested in making a camel. Weird, isn't it? Oh, no. Yeah. Butterfly effect. Yeah. So you moved to Oakland then, didn't you? Yeah, well, we had our honeymoon. We took Tony and Luke with us, didn't we, And oh, yeah. We took Tony and Luke with us on our honeymoon. We went to Westwood Ho, a little B&B. Lovely lady there. We've gone a few years in a row, haven't we? Biddyford it was. Oh, Biddyford, that's right. Easter Water. Easter Water. And she is a lovely lady. Stay B&B. And, um, yeah, and on Andy's birthday that... Well, we got married in 1998. May... May the 2nd, 1998. And then we, um... Went for our honeymoon, like I said. And, you know, on Andy's birthday... November the seventh, we would we did really took a risk, didn't we, Andy? Because mm. I hadn't sold the bungalow that we lived in, so we just left that vacant, went down to Ilfgham, hired a little tiny like place, wasn't it? Yeah, Andy? Tiny little, place. little tiny place in Ilfgham. In the meantime, Andy got a job, had you? Yeah. So, got a job the same day. Yeah. We got a job and a and a flat in the same day. Yeah. That was that sorted. So, where was your job at? 
Oh, I've ruined a holiday park. <laughs> I, I had to think then. Mum said, I don't, want you I don't want you going down Devon and going back on the door again. I've had enough of that. And the first job I got was back on the door on a holiday park. <laughs> Yeah, Ruda Holiday Camp, 1990. Well, I think you, yeah, started just after we got down there. Yeah. Yeah, about that. like seventh of November, place, 1998. Right, oh, right. That Andy's was birthday, and then yeah, started, didn't you? Yeah. Five pound fifty an hour in them days. <laughs> and then three weeks after that, Andy went fishing with Richard, his mate, and an epileptic fit, didn't you, Andy? Yeah, I won a dancing competition. <laughs> yeah, but well, he's got slight <laughs> epilepsy, but and since then, touch wood, he hasn't had one since. But that put pay to his driving, so I had to take him to work all the time at night. Yeah. And pick him up late at night, so it was a bit knackering. Yeah. But yeah. But he done that and then he got another he got he got another job in April nineteen ninety nine as well as the Chef, um, as well as the door work, got a little job at Golden Coast cleaning caravans, and I joined him doing it. So yeah, we were there 1999, and I left almost about 19 years later. <laughs> so Andy left, carried on doing door work. I Too stayed much the there. Door work, then going in cleaning yeah. the next morning, killed me. So I, I, I stick with the clean. Yeah, and I, I was there for. Yeah, like about 19 years. 18, 19 years I was there. And then you bought the cottage, didn't you? In 1999? Yeah, it? we bought the cottage in. That was April. We bought the cottage in June. We sold the, sold the house in Southampton. And then we had a look at places, didn't we, Anne? In Ilfracombe? Yeah. Saw massive a, great oh, places. Oh, we saw a massive a Victorian Six, place. Seven bedrooms, two kitchens. Oh, it was £48,000. In 1999, that's all it was. Had no garden for the kids, though. Yeah, that's trouble what is. we were thinking about the kids more than anything. Yeah, it was like three or four stories high, but had about a little courtyard garden, right, right in the, not in the centre, but as you go into the high street. In, right on the roundabout, wasn't it? That place where the, yeah. where the um, artist shop was at the bottom. Still is there, the artist shop there. Yeah. Yeah, all these years later. So yeah, so that's what we were going about, and then we went up out of Ilfracombe up to Higher Slate which is about two and a half miles out of Ilfracombe where and there's the Khan Khan is a nature reserve now which is beautiful and yeah we saw this fell in love with the cottage didn't we Andy? Yeah. What did I say when we went up the garden? Tell them what I said when I went up the garden. You know what I said when I went up the garden. It's too much for you to cope with or something. I said I said, oh, this is a beautiful garden, I said, but don't expect me to do anything in it. Oh, that was it, yeah. <laughs> and she didn't. And I didn't. Yeah, she just sat by the pool. <laughs> I just sat in it. It was She used to sit there and go, oh, those knees want, um, <laughs> those knees want sweeping up, or this one's doing all that. Uh, all right, right, Diane, I'll get to do it in a minute. Uh, that was Andy's little, like, he was never stressed up the garden. He loved the garden, didn't you, Andy? I was away from the pool. Lovely, yeah. Yeah, lovely. And we, we got it. When we left, like 20, I don't know, 21 years later, it was just as we l wanted it really, lo like a like a jungle, it was just like a wilderness, tropical plants, beautiful, wasn't it, Anne? Yeah, we had banana plants, gunnera, we had, um, all sorts, cactuses, living roots, oh, didn't we? Yeah, we had it, we had it beautiful. But it did, you know, I think if it was in Barnstable, well we loved it, but if it was in Barnstable, I right. think it would have been alright. It all becomes a bit, not They spend much. their money on other things, but yeah. it's not much um, It's a money. lovely town, but some not people much money. spend their money more on drink and other things. So. 
not much money it. So in 2000, 2005, we decided to get a, a shop. We love, oh, our, our bungalow in Southampton, we had what, eight big fish tanks at one point. We love our tropical fish, so we decided to open an aquatic shop. It was called Gaps Aquatic Centre. Your email still Gaps something now. Yeah, Gaps. Oh. Garden, <laughs> aquarium and pond services, because I used to go and fix and repair people's ponds, didn't I? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. We've got to come to that first, Josh. Dad's dad done his own business, gardening business. No, but we want to talk about things got here today. Yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah, oh, yeah, know. that, that, um, we went, we went down there with a quite a small, small mortgage and because of the shop we kept thinking it was going to work. It was a lovely shop, it, we, had, oh, we had marine fish, tropical fish we, and it was a tackle shop as well. Yeah, But it, you loved it didn't oh, you? Oh I loved it but it just wasn't, it wasn't making profit. More money going out than yeah. money coming in. I was still so. doing, Andy was still doing his door work, I was still doing the cleaning but uh, you know I had, I think we didn't have Mondays, Mondays, because Andy worked evenings, he could do the days when I was doing the cleaning, so that was fine, but yeah, it just, get a bit more money on the mortgage, and yeah, the mortgage went up a lot higher than we wanted it to, and in the end, I think, about two and a half years we had the shop, and then I said to Andy, we can't put any more money into it, we have to, yeah, stop it, didn't we? Yeah. So we stopped it, sadly, in 2007 after two and a half years yeah we got you into a lot of debt didn't it yeah it got us into i don't know how much it was i don't know how much it was not exactly mm. at least we tried it yeah. that's the main thing rather than just sit on the sofa we went, about yeah it. we went down there and had a small mortgage and we come out and but we had a you know we paid up most of it off over the years because we got a repayment mortgage not an interest only so we were paying it off anyway yeah, and then after... We were running a lot of money on the uh, doors and cleaning, weren't we? No, and then after that, um, the, um, decided to take on the security at Woolock Bay Holiday Parks, didn't you? Yeah. You ran the security for Woolock Bay Holiday Parks for quite a few years. Show and you first took an interest in airboat. I don't know really, what really sparked it for you. I don't know, we've always wanted to do what I don't know. Because um, you did live in Erica now, both of you, so well, we talked, about, stuff was close we talked about getting a mobile home oh, and we then driving about, around Britain. We talked about loads of things, guys. The UK. Then we talked about getting um, a two, static caravan. I thought, no, I don't want 2007, that. 2007, Andy, we went to Spain and had a look round. I don't mind static caravans, so but I can't move, I'm stuck in one spot. Yeah, we've had you to take me to Spain. I don't know. No, I think we, we shot across to look at a couple of properties in Spain. We did all sorts, didn't we? We were, had the idea of moving to Spain, 2007. Yeah. But I remember that. One, yeah. Well, funny, me and Andy, we just went over. We only had like a few days over there having a look at the, the places. Oh, God. But yeah, the the people weren't that friendly then. I don't know why. I think it was because we were looking in like little villages, like not on yeah. the coast, because there's a lot of expats that like go there 
and have a wonderful time in Spain. But since then, we've had lots of holidays in the Canaries and we all just that. Thought, and what can we people, do? And then a narrowboat came along in our head years ago, and like, well, at least with a narrowboat you can live on it. It's like a home, but you can go wherever you like around the country, and it's peaceful and quiet. And that's what started us going to yeah. the Crick Show, wasn't it, Diane? And we went to the Crick Show in yeah. May 2013, didn't we? Yeah, yeah 2013. Me and Amy went. Yeah, got, a picture, a tent. got pictures of Josh and Amy looking in the narrow boat. Someone else had to help me set the tent up because it was just beyond me. Oh, and I goes, can you do that then, Andy? Can you put that tent up? Yeah, yeah of course I can. It was alright because I used to have one of those tents, but this was all <laughs> over the place, I don't know. We had to ask some people there. Six man to... tent or something, with little rooms inside. So how fast yeah. we had to ask them. I hated it as well, didn't you? Yeah, I didn't really like Shouldn't it. Shouldn't like camping. I, I stayed in uh, Northampton Marina, was it? It's it was near Northampton, I think. Oh, it was lovely, wasn't um, it? Yeah. It was a really good weekend. Yeah. We really enjoyed that. On the Northampton Arm of the Kids well, enjoyed it. Quick. We had cooked breakfast in the morning on a yeah, where we stayed day. was Northampton. Yeah. Northampton Arm of the Grand Union. Um, yeah, the quick show was great. A lot, lot better than it was this year. Cause yeah, it's, I know. Because of COVID, it's... It was a lot different then, wasn't it? Yeah. But can you imagine if we bought it back then? God, we've been on the canals for eight years now. <laughs> And it wasn't going to work, really, because was it? They were still at school. Yeah, we were at school. Uh, Amy How was that going to work? Amy and Josh were still at school. Didn't even really think about it. They were still at school, and we did. We got to that stage. We bought the house on the market. Put the house on the market, but after six months, we had no interest. It's weird. Had no interest at all in the cottage. Everyone loved the cottage, but they didn't want all the land to go with it. So that was well, it. I said to Andy. To why that's a bit weird when we come to telling you how when and when how we sold the house yeah um in 2020 but yeah it didn't really work in 2013 did it six months on the market yeah no i said you just sort of gave it. up didn't you yeah it's really stressful god it, it is stressful you know you have to show people around you have, oh yeah. yeah it's just yeah it's a bit so we decide oh that's it no won't worry and then we me and annie were thinking of like you know motorhome doing that sort of thing but oh I'm glad we didn't do that because it's so like after being on here it's so stressful on the roads yeah glad we never went that way with it we bought points it's a point system it's 30,000 points a year you have which say a two-week holiday in Tenerife might be about 10,000 points so you have at least like probably six to eight weeks holiday if you want to but at the moment you can't take it so it seems a waste at the moment we've had that since May 2006 haven't we Andy? The last time we used it was uh, January 2020. Yeah, last time we used it, but but you can, you don't lose the points, you can put them on to the next year. So as long as you take them within the next year, it's absolutely fine. And, and like like Andy said, we've had some fantastic holidays. We've been, oh my God, we've been, well, I can't list all the places we've been with it. It's been 
all the Canaries we've done, Spain, Portugal, yeah. oh, bloody out. Well, so many different places we've been, haven't we? Yeah, it's been Egypt. We finally had the opportunity. Sorry. No, that's alright. <laughs> finally had the opportunity to um, book in an aeroboat, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, diamond, di diamond through Diamond Resorts. They do narrowboat holidays. Funny so, enough. Yeah, 2016. Oh. That's when we had our first one. I, remember you on that one. I think she was yeah. called Abby Cleves or something like that. The first one. 57 foot she was. And we took her on the Langolan. Langolan, yeah. Langolan. Alright, Anne. <laughs> Whatever you call it. Whatever you call it. We got her at um, Anderton. Yeah, got her at Anderton. Went up the middle. No, we didn't. We got it at Blackwater. Oh, sugar, yeah. Sorry, we got her at Blackwater. Thinking about That's the other one. That's the second one. That's the second one. <laughs> God's sake. Your hair. We got her at Blackwater. Black. Oh, Black Meadow, Black Meadow, Black Meadow Marina, in Ellesmere. Ellesmere. Yeah, that's uh, where we got her from. And, and then, then we done the. Big... I absolutely hated it because I was oh, 15. He, I tell you what, you can't believe what he's like now, guys, because he absolutely hated it. He was in the boat most of the time, and one time we had to cruise, and we had to come back to the same spot because he didn't have internet anywhere. Well, so we I know the right exact spot where it was. Yeah. yeah. Reverse the boat pack is better. Than, there's more signal. So once we get there, I'm going to make a little piece oh. of camera about it. Yeah, he he actually did come out, I think, for the big aqueduct. Yeah. I think that was probably about it. Come out, Josh. We're going to the... Okay. <laughs> Amy, and, Amy and Robbie did come with us, but it was Jade's wedding. Jade and his daughter's wedding. So they want... Because it was a 57 foot, one wasn't enough room for all of us. So Amy and Robbie stayed at Jade's, didn't they? Yeah. They came yeah. out for the day with us. They camped in the garden, so Amy loved that. <laughs> when I look back on it, I still, I really like it, you know? Somehow, it's weird. <laughs> I hated it then, but now I really like it. Yeah, oh, weird. it loves nature now and all uh, this kind of thing. Yeah, that sort uh, of sparked it a bit more, didn't it? Yeah. The dream to live yeah. on a airboat. So and quiet, they, this canal, though. It's even quieter this week. And with the with the we wouldn't have had the opportunity with Diamond, and and this was like 28th of August. It was for a week, so it's still summer holidays. And I asked the guy, I went in there and said, well, if we haven't got Diamond, we can't use our points. How much is it for a week? A uh, 1,400 pound, my love. He goes, <laughs> yeah, 1,400 pound for a week. That was 2016. <laughs> that was 2016. So oh, you know, man. Diamond, we have to pay that. But then on the other hand. We used to, get all of us go, like all five of us, including Robbie, Amy's boyfriend, and we used to have, well, we've been to Bulgaria, we've had some beautiful holidays. Yeah. And you imagine, like, in a two-bedroom apartment, you know, and you, what you have to pay for flights and all that. So really, I think it's, it's paid for itself, really. So, we've gone to 2020, 
exciting year. Yeah, well, I think, well, the reason we've done it really is, I don't know, it's just... I don't know. Life, really. We were just, like, I was doing 30, 40 hours at the, I, well, I left the campsite and I went and worked 2000 and... I think I was there about two, two, late 2000, almost 2000. No, oh, I don't know. Really no, it was November 2017, I think. I moved on, and even though I'd worked at the camps for like nearly 20 years, got nothing. Didn't get a bottle of wine, didn't get a bunch of flowers, didn't get anything from them, you know. And you're just a number, obviously, you're just a number. And then I went to work at Sandy Cove Hotel at Kumartin, near Kumartin work there doing the housekeeping and yeah I was doing 30 40 hours a week came to the COVID COVID struck you know and, and we were I was furloughed furloughed and I don't know if you remember the first lockdown was absolutely beautiful it was March April so I was furloughed from the 21st of March right to the 4th of July and the weather was absolutely beautiful I had the swimming pool at the garden so I was just laid there, relaxing, reading my book, getting in the swim pool out again, really enjoying it. Uh, it was a bit of a shock with Andy's work because they made him redundant two weeks, didn't they, Andy? Two yeah. weeks before uh, the COVID first lockdown. Yeah, that was it. I was at Tesco's. Yeah. Josh had a yeah. Josh had a brilliant work. I didn't even know it was lockdown because all I did was go to work. <laughs> He was one of these, you know, that oh, kept, the key worker. Yeah, key worker kept kept us going really. Look. And he, you, you had a, quite a few shifts, and you just his permanent shifts were just a weekend. But then he got about eleven days in a row. You done yeah. one that time, didn't you? This was I, I got the job in October 2019 before the uh, lockdown. Yeah. It's the best job I possibly probably could have got. Yeah. really. In a supermarket. Yeah. That's how I have all this gear. I bought it with all my money from there, from the spoils of Tesco. Yeah. But luckily, Andy had security up his sleeve, so he had the badge, so it was a lifesaver really. He went and worked at Morrison's and, and um, Sainsbury's, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, over the place. In about eight, security. It felt April, I would, come, I would come down from uh, my bedroom and I'd go in the lounge. And I'd be there and I'd why are they watching narrowboat videos? <laughs> they're watching crews in the car. Oh, we were watching them fun, all the time, weren't we? Diaries, everyone. About how, we were just watching them all the time. And I, Every time I walked uh, through the lounge, they were watching narrowboat videos. Cheeky little mark on uh, and Andy, diaries. And Andy had a, a, was thinking as well. What were you thinking, Andy? You were thinking about COVID and Yeah, life's God, all these too people short. were dying and going down with it. And oh, it was horrible. Working on the supermarkets, wow, that was difficult. Yeah, because you had to wear a mask all the time, didn't you? No. Oh no, then masks hadn't come in, had they? Uh, no, and we weren't supposed to wear them because we have to communicate with people, be in security. So stupid. Yeah, yeah. So I could have. I know. Luckily, I never caught COVID. I don't think masks came in until about crikey, September, October, yeah. didn't they? We had, we had people yeah. turning up at the supermarkets with um, oxygen masks on, and like you see in like um, a film, you know, with, yeah. with the full suit. And I was like, what the hell? And then, Coming and shopping in one of them. And you could, only, you, you could only let so many people in, couldn't you? Whole families were going shopping. Yeah. When you're only meant to be one person going. Well, they used to kick right off. <laughs> what? Only one person allowed in? I said, yeah, you, all of you can't come in. We were restricted to a certain amount of shoppers. Hey, oh, God. I know, you know why security was there. It used to get quite, um, quite yeah. nasty. Yeah. yeah so you've got to work in the courts, didn't you? Basketball yeah. courts. Then, about May. You said, but May, you yeah. brought me into the lounge. Ugh. But May, all we're thinking of... Would... And you sat yeah. me down and you said, <laughs> should we tell him? No, we'll tell him. Oh, we're thinking about selling the house. I'm like, what? <laughs> Jesus Christ. And I was like, what am I going to do? I, I said, well... so panicky. I said, well, well, you can either come with us or you stay here and get yourself a flat. And then one night I said, can you please delay it a year so I can save up more money? <laughs> but then... I started watching Aramac videos as well, and then I started <laughs> liking it, and then I started getting excited, and then I oh. ended up, you know, really wanting it. It's wanted probably, to leave work. It's probably could have, could have, because of COVID, I think, guys, 
Because I said to Andy, oh, we'll do it when I'm 60, didn't I, Andy? Yeah. I said, we'll do it when I'm, when I'm 60. And, I, and then, you know, we'll do it in two years' time. Or we'll do it in a year's time. And then, You're oh, come on, what are we waiting for? Let's just do it. sat there talking about it. <laughs> and then you put the house on the market. Put the house on the market. May. No, it was June. 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 I only remember because it was my ex-husband's birthday, the 11th of June. You have to relate everything to something, <laughs> The 11th of Ju June, we put it on the market, 10th of June, I think, 11th of June, had someone come round, so then it went in one day, yeah. the cottage. Or you know, a I, yeah, it needed, the trouble is, it needed a lot of work. The, both, we were gradually doing the cabins up up the garden, uh, the bathroom roof needed doing, it was just, so it was a lot of work needed doing on it, and unless we had about 20 grand, 30 grand to do it. 16, 20, that's a trouble, that's an old house. Yeah, so, yeah, so we put it on the market, it went one day, um, took it off the market completely, we had viewings all set up for the Saturday, Sunday, and then we had a survey, and then there was quite a few things, like, it's very, very old, 400 years old, so, we had a survey, a few things. It was a doctor that was going to buy it, and now don't want it. He pulled, want it. He pulled, pulled, out. Yeah. pulled straight out. So we put the house back on the market. Yeah, put it back on the market. There's get... a couple who wanted to see it after yeah. the doctor. Yeah. And then they came back, and they was like, they got another opportunity. Yeah, the couple. Because the, it went and fell through. The couple wanted to see it on the Saturday, and they they just out of curiosity went into the estate agent and said, oh, oh God, we're having a struggle trying to find somewhere we really like. We can't, still can't find anywhere. And they say, oh, well, two golly bridge is back on the market. What? So, yeah, so they came, came round, Andy showed them around, the estate agent did, and Andy shook on a price, uh, 190,000. We put it up for offers over 186,000. We've got 190,000. You expect to get a bit more, though, didn't you? We, we got, it's funny because we had other people lined up and other people wanted it. And I kept telling them to, you know, keep it out on the market, let everyone see it, see what offers you get. But well, they, we did, they were we, so we, didn't, we didn't take it completely off. The estate agent said, leave it on, see what else you get. And we got off at 199, but the trouble is, I think they weren't for, they weren't in a position, they hadn't sold theirs and things like that. Not just so. that, you might get more money for it, but these people that I shook on didn't want to survey it. Yeah, so, so they someone might say, oh, I'll give you 230 grand for it, fine. Then they get a surveyor, then they knock 30 grand off because it needs 30 grand's worth of work. We were really Back honest. We were really honest with them. Yeah. We told them everything that was on the survey. This is all the things they've said about silly little things like, like we had a fish pond up the garden and yeah. it was bowing slightly. Well, you know, the surveyor said, well, that might go and go because our the house. Our co and then you, we sold the house again and yeah, it was going through. Oh, God. Then we were looking for boats, weren't we? And you kept watching this bloody video. <laughs> from Tinsley Marina. In the thing is, we were watching this video, but it was just out of our price range. We we wanted to spend about 40,000, didn't we? We got a lot for 40,000. I still remember yeah. the little song. But this was 85,000 Olive was up for originally. They kept watching it. They just kept watching it. Kept watching it go down in yeah. price. They kept talking about Pro Bill. They kept calling it Pro Bill, even though it was Olive. This was October. It had been up since it had been advertised. Actually, I think that video was made in the August. Yeah. But it it'd was up for sale for since end of October. So almost a year yeah. it had been up for sale. And when it got down to about seventy thousand, I said, "Oh God." We'd seen, as you can see from our first uh, first vlog, we see a couple of boats, but we're about forty odd thousand. We just needed too much doing to them. Yeah, so they decided to spend another twenty in there, really, didn't they? Yeah. So I said to Andy, we're going to have to up, up the money, really, and get something that don't need so much doing to her. So yeah. So you needed so, a bit of money to pay off the debts as well, didn't you? Yeah, got a, I had a little small, small little mortgage I had to pay off, a few credit cards I had to pay off. So you know, and I wanted some in the bank. Well, not in the bank. Put it into premium bonds because you don't get anything in the bank. So we wanted that. Oh, wow. Whoa, look at him. <laughs> That's, yeah, so um, yeah, so we, we went to go and see her, didn't we? Did, I didn't record it because I wasn't. No, talking. I wish uh, Josh had uh, recorded it. Yeah, I went to see her on the 3rd yeah. of October. She sat down in the armchair at the front. Ah, oh, I think I'm in love with it, Josh. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I didn't like it that much, to be honest. <laughs> I preferred other ones, but... Oh, me and, Andy on me, me and Andy fell in love with her, didn't we, Andy? Mm. I went in and I... Uh, Picked all the boxes. Yeah, the yeah. outside needed a bit of TLC, like painting and that sort of thing. But the inside's like, was quite really good. Yeah. And it'd been left there for over a year, you know? The sale. So then you bought it on the 3rd of October. Yeah. It was both, it was a sweet and sour day, wasn't it, really? Oh. Is that the word for it? Good and bad day, really. Yeah. Yeah, as you know, uh, you know, it was a fantastic day. I got back from, because we had to travel from Ilfracombe right to Woking, or River Way, like where Piper Marina is. So it's quite a long, quite a long drive. And we get back, um, the phone rings as I'm coming up to the house. And it's my mum and dad and Andy said, oh, don't worry about it. We'll ring her back when we get in. You'll drive in, just leave it. So I left it and then a few minutes later, my son, Luke, rang and just said Gary was dead, which was my brother, just, oh. just died. You know, went out for a meal the night before, found in bed, like, just looked like he was asleep. So, yeah, so it was a bit, a bit of good and bad, exactly when my grandson was born, exactly the same. The day my grandson was born, George, Luke found out that he had a tumour in his spinal cord. Exactly the same day. Yeah, we get so, a bit of good news, we yeah. get bad news. We? But, yeah, we put an offer in for... Silly, it was up for 70, we put an offer in for 65. And she said, I'm not even going back with that offer, she said to them, She said because I know they won't take it. So I said, okay then, we'll go back with 68. So she rang up the mum, said, oh, can we do 60, you know, 60, 68. And they said 68. I said, no, we take 67. I said, yeah, yeah, we take 67. So we got her for 67 in there. Yeah. And we'd, they'd had a survey on her uh, three months before that. So we didn't have to bother with the survey. So all we had to do was give a thousand pound deposit. And I didn't have that. I had to borrow that off Luke, my son. Bless him. Thank you, Luke. Yeah, so we borrowed it off of Luke. Luke thousand pounds. I, I was going to do it. Luke yeah, because okay. Josh, Josh had it in his bag. But we were really worried because this is the 3rd of October and we, the house was just dragging and dragging. Land registry, the people that moved there, before we did change the name, so we had a problem with that, with the post office. Well, oh, real, yeah, real problem. Two problems. months later, we're back, we were on the boat, you know, in 4th of December 2020. Yeah. And, God, we sold the house in July. Yeah, well, we sold the house, yeah, first of all, beginning of June. Yeah. Six but, months it took us, really. Yeah, that's six months. Annoying. Agonizing, wasn't it? We got on the canal in the dead of bloody winter. I wanted to yeah. get on in September. <laughs> it was agonizing though, that week, wasn't it? Oh, it was so. I don't envy anyone that is selling a house. So stressful. Really, really stressful. Yeah. And our solicitors were absolutely useless. You know, they didn't even get in contact with you or nothing. They I did most of the chasing dreadful. around, ringing up all the time from work. Yeah. Yeah, it's ridiculous. But, you know, nearly a year later. Yeah. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So, oh, we're so excited, weren't we? We finally got on the canals. Oh. Uh, 
4th of December and... Well, we didn't get on the canal. We're not going to go into... <laughs> yeah, we're not going to go into the full details because there's going to be a future oh, video on that. Oh. Yeah. oh yeah, that was it moving! God! But now we're on the canals. We're absolutely loving it. Oh yeah, absolutely. What can't you love about this? Look at it. We've been exploring Look at the globe oh. in the best way possible, we think. <laughs> There's no other better way to explore this country. Oh no. When we, to be honest, we haven't really seen much of this country. We've been the Lake District, Scotland, Cornwall, Devon. That's probably about it, really. Yeah. Isn't it? We haven't seen all this stuff in the middle, which is absolutely beautiful. Mm. In Wales now. Yeah. Well, Wales the other day, weren't you? Yeah. Beautiful. But, it's, it, it, it can be stressful sometimes as you see me getting stressed out a lot. Well, there's good and bad. There's good and bad. We're honest. You know, it's not all roses, and, and, roses and all that. You know, there is, you know, when we first got on her, you know, and the two months stuck in the marina, we might as well have been in the terrace house, to yeah. be perfectly honest. So, in the end, it took <laughs> us eight months to really get... No, it took us more than that. It took us about... No. Yeah, probably took us about eight months to get onto the canals eventually, didn't it? Yeah, because end of February, 28th of February, last day of February we got onto... Yeah, well, no, we didn't get onto... It wasn't until April the 1st when we got off of the uh, Brent, Brentford, Brentwood? Yeah, or? the Tidal Thames onto yeah. the Grand Union. <laughs> 1st of April we were on the canals. Uh, yeah, we wouldn't go back, would we? No, oh, no, crikey. Well, I don't know about me, I've got another... Josh's got all his life ahead of him. If he mm. wants to do it later on, you know, go back and, you know, get a house. Or he might want to get a boat and, you know, stay with us. Don't know. Just don't know yet. Yeah. Never a boat <laughs> That's what's good about it. We never know what's going to happen. Yeah. It's just an adventure, really. And if, you, if you're thinking about buying a boat, we would definitely recommend it, wouldn't we? Oh, yeah. Yeah, really recommend it. And you could even work on a boat. His dad's got a job and we yeah. can still cruise and still go wherever cruising. we want. We've eventually had to get a job, guys, because I had so, I've had got yeah, savings. It's money. And the savings are just... Because really. nothing's coming in and it's all going out. You think it's not such not so expensive to live on a, a, a narrow boat. Crikey, what I pay a, a whole year for the Canal River Trust licence, insurance sure. and the... Um, no, just the Canal River licence, the insurance and the rescue, like RAC, RCR, is the amount I used to pay every month just yeah. to live in the cottage. So, but then obviously you've got your food and your diesel on top of that, repairs to the boat. We, we spent quite a lot of money on that when we first got yeah. home, with solar panels, new batteries, etc, etc. So it is, you know, it does go, and like, you know, you've always got to have a little bit of backup. If, like, you know, your engine breaks down, something like that, you need a new engine, you yeah, know. It's definitely worth doing, I think, isn't it? But all those, all the, yeah, all those th little negatives, there's, there's too many positives yeah. that are lovely, you know, about it. We've got about 2,000 more miles to explore, really. Yeah. The there's certain ones, we don't, uh, yeah. I don't personally regret getting a 70 foot because I love her. Yeah. But, but it does but, restrict us sort of where we get yeah, a 70 foot. Yeah. We can't cross the Pennines, we can't go onto the Lancaster Canal. Um, there's a few others. things, but you can always hire boats if you want yeah. to, if you want to do those. Yeah, I think that's going to be it for today. I yeah. hope you all enjoyed the video. Thank you. How about our little life? Probably a bit long. But, yeah. Uh, Please like and subscribe. Yeah. And yeah, I guess we'll see you in the next one. Yeah, Good. see you later guys. Bye.